right at six feet. Now I'm just a little shorter. I can't lie anymore. I try to do my hair so it just looks taller, but it's just a lie. Just to make me feel good, let's do 72, okay? <laughs> So 72 minus the, what is it, 80? Over 3.3. Do you suppose it's come, gonna come up positive or negative? negative? I'm less than the average, I should. I hate being below average, <laughs> dang it. But yeah, I'm less than the average height, so I, I'm gonna be a negative z-score here. And remember, you have to do this in the same order, x minus mean, x all the time, x minus the mean. For populations or samples, it doesn't matter. Take your data value minus the mean for that population that you're dealing with. So here we're going to get negative 8 divided by 3.3. You get that as well? Yeah. Negative 8 divided by 3.3, and you get negative what? 2.42. Well, you're all together on that, so pretty good. <laughs> negative 2. Point, am I usual or unusual? Unusual. My hopes are dead. Dang it. <laughs> Now, this doesn't mean it can't happen, does it? It just, I mean, well, it does mean it can't happen. Horrible basketball. But, I mean, height speaking, that doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means it's going to be going to be a little more rare than you would commonly find with this. Uh, what was that guy? Uh, Muggsy Bowe. Did you ever hear of him? Yes. How tall was he? He's like 5'4". Yeah. He played NBA basketball. I mean, he was so short, he like, looked at people's legs and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, seriously, like, I think he did. You know, honestly, he was that short. He Maybe not between the legs, but, you know, stuff like that. So he was really, really, really short. So it's not saying it doesn't happen. It's just saying it's rare. Okay, it's saying it's very, very, very rare. The further you go standard deviation-wise away from the mean, the more rare a piece of data is. Are you getting that concept? What that means for z-score is the larger absolute value-wise, the larger a z-score is, that means absolute value-wise, you go more negative also, the larger an absolute value uh, z-score is, the more rare your data, piece of data is, okay, as compared to the mean. We'll say that one little statement and then we'll call it a day. the z-score we're talking about in terms of absolute value that means just you know speaking away from the mean so like a negative four that absolute value wise that's four right so that would have a, a large z-score score in terms of absolute value, the rarer the piece of data. Do you know how to calculate a z-score? Yes. Do you know what z-score calculates? Yes. Do you know the relationship between the rareness of data and the z-score? Yeah. Bigger the z-score, rarer or less rare? Rarer. Yeah, very good. I don't even know if rare is a word. <laughs> Did today make sense for you folks? Or you yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, now. Okay, so continuing on from our, our 3.4, we already come, concluded the z-score talk, and we had no, question, no questions on that, right? Okay, so we are going to talk about quartiles and percentiles. They're very similar, and I'll show you the similarities as we go through this. So firstly, let's see what happens when we talk about quartiles. What's the key word in quartiles? 
quarter, 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 quarter is a quarter of a gallon, right? So we call it a quart. But that's that's key word is like the quart quarter idea. And so what quartiles do? It really just breaks your data up into quarters. That that's all it does. Um, it's very similar to the idea of like a median. A median breaks up your data right in the middle, right? So that's called a median. The quartiles just break it up every quarter. So it's the same basic idea, it's just there's four, uh, three of them instead of one of them. We'll talk about that in just a second. So we'll talk about our quartiles. Here we go. First quartile. We do have a little abbreviation for that. We write Q1. The first quartile is going to represent the bottom 25%. 25% of course is a quarter, right? The bottom 25% of our data. Now, what does that imply if I say the bottom 25%? Does that data have to be ordered or can it be unordered? What do you think? If it's like the median, it better be in order, right? So the bottom 25% would be the lowest 25% of the values. That's what we mean by the first quartile. So Q1 is going to be the data value that represents the bottom 25% of sorted, that means in order, data. Okay. Hey, what do you think the second quartile is going to be? Don't all speak at once. It's really annoying. You know, you all start talking at the same time. What do you suppose the second quartile is going to be? If the first one's the bottom 25%, what's the second one? Yeah, the bottom 50%. Can you tell me what other value we already have that represents the bottom 50% of a data set that's in order? The median. Q2 and median are the same thing. Okay, so notice how the median is right in the middle, right? 50% to the right, 50% to the left. Q2 is right in the middle, 50% to the left, 50% to the right. So those values are the same. Q2 and the median are one and the same. They both represent the bottom 50% of our data. So I'll write Q2, but you're never going to see that. You're going to see median. Okay, so we have Q1, which is the bottom 25%, Q2, or the median, which is the bottom 50%, Q3, what do you think Q3 is going to be? What percentage? The bottom 75% of the data, that's right. Now, there's no Q4. Why do you suppose there's no Q4? Be everything, right? Why would you even need to categorize that? If you're talking about the, the fourth quartile, you mean the very top of your, your data. It's, it's just everything's below it. So we don't, we don't have a Q4. Uh, it's like there are only three quartiles because we're separating this into four sections. It's, it's, I think I've used this analogy before. It's like cutting bread. If you cut a loaf of bread with one one cut, how many slices do you have? You have two, two slices. So we're cutting our 100% into four quarters. We only need three slices to do that. Does that make sense? So we have all of our data. We're going, oh, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and that makes inherently a fourth. 25% section of that. So we only need three. Q1, Q2, which is median, and Q3. Now, if you remember, if you don't remember this, go back and look at those videos. By the way, are you looking at the videos? Are you watching them at all? Yeah. If you haven't, try it. They're kind of fun. I make stupid jokes and everything. And some of you laugh. You can hear the laughs. 
And then sometimes when I make the joke and you all laugh like like you're doing now, it doesn't really come on the video, so I just like I look like an idiot. So, <laughs> see, that came up, that I won't look too much like an idiot. But uh, anyway, um, I totally lost my train of thought there, what we were talking about. <laughs> the videos. Uh, oh yeah, if you don't remember this, your calculator will find the median for you. Remember that? You just plug in the data and you press one variable statistics. It's the only thing I've taught you so far in the calculator. But also down the line, it will show you Q1 and Q3 as well. It won't show you Q2 because it just calls it the median. Uh, but so along with the, the mean and the standard deviation, all those nice things, it'll calculate all this stuff for you too. If you don't remember that, go back on that day that I did the calculator stuff and review that. Or come and see me after class or something, I can show you how to do that. So your calculator will figure this out very quickly. You don't even have to put it in order in the calculator. Yeah, by hand, we're going to show you how to do this by hand. It's not a hard thing. You'll see it's very similar to finding the median. But let's do an example. Would you like to see an example of how to do this? Now, one thing, before I go any further, different programs sometimes calculate quartiles differently. I know that's weird, but that happens. Like uh, Math Excel and Math Lab uh, and uh, there's a couple of ones. Out there. Stat, there's something like Stat. I forget the program. And your calculator, some of them will do it differently. Um, so what we're going to stick with is the stuff on the calculator or the way that you would do it by hand. Because I think, I mean, if you're going to do it by hand, it gets a certain way, your calculator should give you that, right? And it, it is the same. Other ones calculate slightly different. But I just need to point that out to you. So let's do an example to find out how we can calculate all these quartiles. Okay, what's the first thing we need to check for if we're looking at a data set that we're trying to find this information on? What do you think? Okay, is it sorted? Is it in order? Great, so we need to check that though because if it's not, we already covered this on the median, it's not going to work out right. So in order to find these quartiles, here's how you're going to do it. The first thing you're going to do is find the median first, if you're doing this by hand. Find the median because that's automatically one of the quartiles, right? That's Q2. So go ahead on your data set right now. See if you can find the median. Remember, if the median has an odd number of numbers, it's just a middle, middle data set or data value. If it has an even number of numbers, you've got to average something in there. So find me the median. Good. So median is going to be somewhere in the middle. Of course, we have an even number of data points. So we're going to look right here at the two middle ones, the 10 and the 15. And we have to pick the number right in the middle, or in other words, the arithmetic average of this, the mean of these, these two numbers. So you add them together, you get 25. You divide by 2, you get 12, 25. Great. So our median. Twelve point five. How many people were able to find twelve point five? Good, 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 good. Here's the nice thing. After you find the median, that's essentially broken up your data set. Not essentially, it's literally broken up your data set into two groups. The top fifty percent, which you can identify to the right, since it's sorted, and the bottom fifty percent. So notice this is why we said the bottom.